one of the things that stands out for me um, with regards to how the ECD program has evolved over time um, and which is really a highlight is the introduction of our, um, of our um, preschool braille program and um, it's one of our baby programs in that um, it started around about three years ago so um, children between the ages of from two and a half, three years of age, every child who accesses the preschool would be able to be introduced into Braille. Um, that for me is a highlight in terms of um, LOFAB realizing um, once again um, how it is, what, what all of the resources are that we have available in our pool of, 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 of professionals and expertise and then making the good, making um, as best use um, of that within the organization. Um, one, just looking at children and how it is that they develop. Um, children from the age of, I don't know, as young as what um, um, any child, whether there's a child who is, uh, has a sight impairment or not, um, little children are of, of obviously mimicking what parents do. So you have little children that are pretending they are that they are going through the newspaper or reading the magazines like like mommy and dad or, 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 or grand grandparents and so on. So we want to provide the same opportunities for um, children who are blind and visually impaired. Um, so even if it is that in our daily preschool program here, children access books, um, children access books um, that are. Um, in Braille, children access large print books and then children also actual, uh, access the, the usual normal print, print books. Um, so even coming back to you know, just development and how children develop, um, children as young as two years, two and a half years of age in preschools for, um, um, that, that cater for children who are sighted, um, children are already learning the ABCs. So that is something that we're very proud of in terms of a service that we um, that we provide, um, because LOFOB is um, is one of five ECD facilities um, in the country. I'm um, not not aware of any other ECD facility, however, that introduces children who are blind and visually impaired at that young an age to um, to Braille. And if one just taking into consideration how children learn and generally um, the principle is the sooner you start with intervention the better. Ne? So we're wanting to, to, to give our children access to books, access to literacy from as young an age as, um, as possible. Before, other than um, sorry, other than them accessing Braille only for the first time at the age of six or seven years of age when it is that they start primary schooling because then obviously the children would be at a, at a disadvantage. So we're very proud of that particular program. And, um, and then added to that, that particular program, um, what's the use of the, child being, of the child who is blind or visually impaired being braille literate, but there's nobody else in their house, in their home or in their family who can provide them the necessary support. Um, I think of myself, I'm a mother of two children, um, parents sit with homework daily in terms of once the child starts primary schooling. So it's based on the same principle as that when the child um, is accessing Braille um, as a parent, as a mom, as a granny, as an auntie, as an older older sibling, ne? Um, we provide um, we provide um, Braille training to families as well, to parents as well, so that um, you don't have the scenario of where the only um, the only um, individual in any given home who is accessing Braille is the child who is blind or visually impaired. Um, say, for example, I always use the um, use the example or the description of if it is that it's going to be that it's Mother's Day, ne? Um, you would have the scenario where your child would be able to make you a basic little Happy Mother's Day card, I love you. And um, the parent then, because they would have also been through LOFOB's parent braille program, also been be taught braille, the parent would also then be able to access braille along with his or her child and actually speak the same language. So um, um, that for me is a highlight. That for me is um, one of the services that we are very proud uh, about in terms of 
um, once again the needs of, of individuals and of children who are, who are blind and, and visually impaired. So just generally um, once a month um, at least there are different braille programs. There are a few mommies at this particular point in time who access our braille service services twice a week or thrice a week and then there are those of our working parents who um, who um, access the parent braille training program at least um, at least once a month um, where it is that they come in and they are provided with the with the necessary with the necessary skills development, um, there's always to there's always the scenario of in our in our field um, the area of blindness and visual impairment. There's always the discussion around how viable, how relevant Braille still is, um, and I think that a lot of the conversation around that. Um, when it is that you speak to, when you actually speak to somebody, an individual who's blind or visually impaired themselves, they'll tell you that there is um, a distinct role um, in which Braille, Braille plays in their lives. Um, a lot of things has happened now in terms of, has come up with regards to technology. Um, so you have computers that are, you know, um, that, that individuals can access. Um, um, adaptive computers, um, etc. But definitely, there is a need for um, for Braille still. So we're happy to be to have seen that need and to have um, um, introduced the program, which 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 is comprehensive in that we are supporting the child who is blind and visually impaired, but then also his or her family support.